The Life Cycle of Toxoplasma gondii, Part 2 Thousands of oocysts of Toxoplasma gondii are formed in the intestine of cats and shed in the soil. The oocysts will become infective only after going through the process of sporulation. Sporulation is a series of divisions in which the number of chromosomes is reduced in half. The first division of the oocyst gives rise to two sporocysts. Each is limited by a sporocyst wall, here shown in green. At the end of the process, the mature oocyst contains two sporocysts. Each sporocyst contains four elongated sporozoites. This is the mature oocyst, infective for any warm-blooded animal that ingests it, including people. The oocyst itself is also protected by a cyst wall that is resistant to the environment. When a cat evacuates close to a pasture or vegetable garden, these will become contaminated with oocysts. Moreover, the oocysts can contaminate and be carried by a water source. The oocysts are very resistant, enduring variations in temperature and humidity, remaining viable and infective for a long time. Animals grazing in these areas will be contaminated with toxoplasma. In the same way, people can acquire the parasite by eating food or drinking water contaminated with oocysts. While going through the digestive system, the cyst and spore cyst walls will be digested by enzymes of the stomach and small intestine, liberating the sporozoites. When infection takes place by the ingestion of raw or undercooked meat, the prime infection is made by bradyzoite forms. Both sporozoites and bradyzoites will invade intestinal cells of the new host, where they will divide, giving rise to tachyzoites the forms that multiply quickly. From the intestine, the tachyzoites will spread to other cells and tissues, establishing the acute form of toxoplasmosis. The tachyzoite of Toxoplasma gondii moves by gliding in the extracellular space, projecting this hollow cylindric structure, the conoid, and secreting proteins from the micronemes, here seen as yellow circles. When a target cell is found, as this macrophage, the tachyzoite adheres to it and starts to secrete the contents of the rub trees, that we see here as white bubbles. This modifies the properties of the plasma membrane of the host cell, which becomes receptive to invasion. During invasion, the toxoplasma is compressed, assuming an hourglass shape. Inside the host cell, it will remain inside a parasitophorous vacuole that protects it from lysosomal enzymes and from the immune system of the host organism. Inside the vacuole, dense granules start to secrete its contents, which will give origin to a tubular network and, furthermore, contribute to the growth of the vacuole as the tachyzoites replicate by endodiogeny. During endodiogeny, two daughter cells are formed inside the mother cell. The mother cell keeps the apical complex until late in the process, while the nucleus and other organelles duplicate and are distributed between the future daughter cells. Two new apical complexes and the inner pellicle form. The two daughter cells emerge, but remain linked to a residual body. After several endodiogenic cycles, the parasites are assembled as a rosette around the residual body that progressively accumulate acidocalcisomes. Ultimately, the parasites detach from the residual body, break first the vacuole and then the plasma membrane and move seeking for new host cells to invade. 
This cycle then repeats. Transported in the circulatory system, tachyzoites spread to other tissues and organs of the host, such as muscles and the brain. As the immune system of the host is activated and starts to respond, toxoplasma will remain longer inside cells such as neurons and will start to convert into bradyzoites. The vacuole acquires a thick cyst wall and is now called a tissue cyst. These tissue cysts can remain unperceived for a long period of time, possibly the life of the host, being characteristic of the chronic stage of toxoplasmosis. When present in animals, such as cows or pigs, these cysts are also a source of contamination to new hosts when their meat is consumed raw or undercooked. The huge diversity of hosts and transmission pathways contribute to the global distribution of toxoplasma in the world.